I think food should be like the best tool if you want to communicate something. Why are you so interested in rice? Rice is the most obvious to tell you like where you grow up. It's the symbol that showing the way to reconnect to your root. The most challenge is how would we communicate so people are convinced, so to say, to open up to try new things. If you enjoy the lesson, if you enjoy the content, please click the subscribe button below. Your support helps me invest in more resources and create even better content for you. So hit subscribe, share this with your friends and join our amazing community. Let's embark on this language journey together. Hi guys, welcome back to Kruan's podcast again. And again, today I have a very interesting guest who is really knowledgeable and very lovely and friendly actually. So she is an owner of two restaurants in Chiang Mai. The first one is called Barefoot and the second one is called Po Sop, local rice eatery. Actually, I've been, you know, reading a little bit about her stories and I have to admit that her stories are really, really, really interesting. And today we will be talking with her and I want to ask her what's, you know, what's going on and where her restaurants come from and stuff like that. So please welcome P.A. Yay! Hi, Hi, How are you doing? Really nice, thank you. That's great, that's great. So, um, to be honest, like I think we've been friends on Facebook for right. a while, but we haven't Maybe really... Maybe more than 10 years. 10 years? I guess so, just after graduated. That's or true. Or even before. That's true, that's mm -hmm. true. And I um, I see that you have, you know, a few businesses, right? Like your mm -hmm. restaurants and a lot of workshops and right. activities as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, so uh, could you tell us a little bit about your, your restaurants? Okay, so now I own two small restaurants, really small one. The first one is called Barefoot, as you mentioned. And the first one, we try to focus on pasta. Mm. But also we try to emphasize like using only local and seasonal ingredient. It's like the theme of the restaurant when I started 10 years ago. It was like I was falling in love with Chiang Mai. Okay. And I studied literature. That's why I like story storytelling. And then I tried to think that because not everyone loves reading and mm. writing, right? But everyone, at least we need to eat three times a day. I love eating. <laughs> Me too. And that's why like, I think food should be like the best tool if you want to communicate something. So I just choose food mm. as a medium. And then I tried to find like what is the food that is the most comfort for everyone. Whether you are children or you're a bit old or you are Thai or foreigner. And I just came up with the concept that like, let's make fresh pasta. Like mm. we roll the fresh pasta right in front of your eyes, things like that. So you do it from scratch? From scratch, exactly. So how long have you been, how long have you been doing barefoot? This year is going to turn to be 10 years already. Ah, 10 years. Mm -hmm. So you started your first restaurant when you were... 24. 24. Like something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice, nice. It's because, you know, like, I think we have a lot of mutual friends, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I can see my friends like, uh -huh. oh, I'm just going to go to Barefoot uh -huh. and I'm going to check in mm -hmm. at Barefoot. Mm -hmm. And I have so many, like, Falang friends as well. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them know your restaurant. Oh, That's I'm amazing. I'm happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also you have a second restaurant too. And the second restaurant is called Po Sop. Mm -hmm. As I think all of the Thai people know that Po Sop is the name of the rice goddess. And this one, like instead of focusing only pasta, as I would say for bad food, pasta is more like the protagonist of the restaurant. And then when it comes to Po Sop, we try to focus on local rice varieties because of what... Of what I know, in Thailand, we used to have more than 10,000 varieties of rice. 10,000. Mm -hmm. But at, I mean, nowadays, there's still, like, there are 500 or even more varieties. So the second restaurant, I try to focus on rice. Mm -hmm. And with the same concept that we try to focusing on using local and seasonal ingredients as much as we can. 
and it should be as i told you before we do the video that i want it to be like accidentally no meat in there mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. why 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 accidentally no meat because i think like the passion and your goal of life change when you grow up right when i when i first started barefoot i just want to use food as a medium to connect people but then my focus i try to refocus what's my passion or what's my life purpose a little bit more since i grown up grow old a little bit and at some point i was interested i started to interested to like spirituality mm. or like emotions and how to have a more like a healthy life and then i just turned to be a vegetarian i see uh -huh. so that's why i tried to put all my interest and my passion into my business I think that's the way to go, though, because mm -hmm. like nowadays, right? Like for me, I like well, actually, like a few a few years ago, before I, you know, like I'm I'm, I'm this age, I used <laughs> to eat a lot of meat, uh -huh. sausages, mm -hmm. processed food, mm -hmm. and then about six months ago, I mm -hmm. went to the hospital. I had my blood um tested, and it turned out that I have like high uh, cholesterol. Oh. And, and it's because of the way I eat. I eat mm -hmm. a lot of like processed, processed meat, meat and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> when I use social media, mm -hmm. like on Facebook, TikTok mm -hmm. or something like that, I've seen so many videos about people who get sick because they don't really eat the right food, mm -hmm. the right thing. Mm -hmm. So I think the fact that you have, you know, a restaurant mm -hmm. that focuses on rice and healthy food, mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea. Yes, I also think so. But I just... I, I'm not going against people who eat meat at all. I just think like we should just come back to ourselves, mm. to our body and just listen to it deeply. And then your body would tell you exactly what what your body wants right now. I think the best thing is trying to listen to, to your body and try to balance mm. it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So you, I think you probably know a lot about rice. Not that much <laughs> i think because i'm still researching because when i start when i make the decision that i would like to have the rice restaurant is the exact time when i start interested in rice actually mm. so when i do things not only business i just jump into it without mm. hesitation and then i just learn together with experiencing the things that i'm interested in that's mm -hmm. nice. I like it when you say <laughs> I just jump to you know to do it. It's like without yeah. any hesitation. Yeah. So, um, what do you see the role of traditional Thai rice in modern Thai cuisine? Mm. So, modern Thai food, in my opinion, is like what I can see now. There are two mainstream of when we talk about Thai food. Mm. The first one is like the very authentic one. You, you, you try your best to stick to the recipe 100 years ago. You're not trying to change anything. And the second one is like you try to have fun and like play with the ingredient, but then you keep the character. For example, in Thai food, we might know that you should have like the balanced taste of every dish. Like in spiciness there should be some sweetness into that and sourness and saltiness all combined and mm. it would create like umami kind of taste and i think when it comes to the role of traditional rice um we actually there are a lot of opportunities of how rice can play in not only thai food but around the world because you might notice that Thai people, we use rice not only for the main dish. We also use it as like appetizer. For example, in my restaurant, we, we call one dish, which is called rice cracker tapas, which is like the tapas, normally you would use baguette, right? But then we use rice cracker instead. Wow. To make it more, I don't know. Now I want to try it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then the topping would change seasonally according to the vegetable we have or the seasonal ingredient that we can find mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also so appetizer it can be main dish and also dessert like the most famous one mm. so that's a lot of thing and also these days i heard that many people try to avoid gluten and then definitely rice is gluten-free option for everyone mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
why are you so interested in rice? Because, you know, mm. like right now, right, I talk to you and I can see that uh. when you talk about rice, uh. about what you are doing right now, uh. it's like you are shining <laughs> when you talk about that. Yeah, so why mm. are you so interested in rice, but not other things or other local Thai food? Mm. Because I like to talk about or like feel the feeling of being connected to something, to the ground where you live. Or for example, rice is the the most obvious tool to to tell you like where you grew up. Or like mm. it's the symbol that showing the way to reconnect to your root. Mm. And I don't know, that's a there's some powerful energy, I would say, from rice that not everyone, for example, may, if you are a foreigner, maybe you don't feel this much connection with rice. But mm. to me, and I think maybe many Thai people, we feel a kind of like when we think about rice, we think about homecoming, nurturing, motherhood, or even something even bigger. But in the sense of like, feminine energy who embracing us the whole body the whole soul things that's like true that. mm-hmm. i like that i'm really <laughs> into you know nature and things like that yes so. it's really connected i i mean like there's a concept about like eco-feminism for example that they think that the earth or the world is a living creature and it's more like our mother like the word mother earth come from this concept and i really like that mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's nice. Mm. So um, when you first started mm-hmm. um, the restaurant, mm-hmm. did you have to, did you face any problems or challenges mm. in trying to sorting out, you know, like um, local rice varieties huh. or anything? I think the most challenging thing would be how would you invite people to try the things, to come to confront the unknown area of their life. In like in this sense, we talk about the local rice varieties, which you never heard before, even though you are Thai. Mm. And like people would just come to the restaurant and then they would order a khao ka pao. And then the rice that we serve is not familiar to their eyes, for example. It's not white rice. It's look a bit brownish for some season. It look red or black or any other color and they would ask the question like is it jasmine rice is it like can i have white rice instead but then i would say like no we don't have and then another question is that how would we communicate so people are convinced so to say to open up to try new things which is maybe it it can be like beyond the expectation it Mm -hmm. might be more delicious than they expected Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's say like, so for, for example, if I just go to your restaurant mm. and I might be like, oh, Bjorn, what mm. is this? Is it jasmine rice? Mm. Can I just have the normal rice, please? Mm. What, would you, what would you say to me? I would say in this season, we don't have jasmine rice, but maybe in the next coming season. But then I would recommend you that, for example, normally we have at least three blended rice varieties we blend it together so we pick the rice that has strong character of like strong aroma strong outstanding texture and it can be like it can be grown or harvested only in this season only and we would give you the description how healthy it is why is it good for you and what kind of side dishes would go along well with this kind of rice Wow. Mm. Because normally we would say Kin Khao Kap Arai. But my restaurant we try to think the opposite way. Kin Arai Kap Khao. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Mm. Wow, you put a lot of effort and work and your heart into your work. Mm. I like it. Mm. I think that's nice. why you can keep up the work every day. Like it's the reason why you wake up every morning, right? Mm. That's true. That's true. Mm. And how how do you sort out the rice? Where do you get the rice from? Um, fortunately, there are a lot of research nowadays about rice. In CMU, they have like a 
Rice. I'm I'm not sure what's the name of the place exactly, but it's like Rice Research Center, and in Supanburi, there's another one, mm. and there are a lot of articles nowadays that you can find a lot of information about that. And also because Chiang Mai, we have a lot of um, organic like farmers market too, mm. so you can just directly go and then have a conversation, build a relationship with the producer. And then, for example, we know a lot of Pakakayo mm. Brotherhood, and I would just go there and ask them because in that tribe that um, they collect their own like rice variety, and they have more than ten. No, they have more than hundred varieties. Wow! And they're trying to figure it out how to really make people see the meaning of this mm. diversity of life. For example, mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. So, in your opinion. Do you think what are some um, unique um, characteristics of Thai rice mm -hmm. that make it stand out globally? What, 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 what is it good about Thai rice? What is it good about what I know? In the world, there are like the three, big three families of rice. The Japanese style and the Java style and the Thai, which is also the same varieties as the Indian rice. Mm. So... The outstanding qualities of Thai rice is the aroma. And it if you compare to other type of rice in the world, Thai rice has have less sugar in there. So obviously it's obviously it's a bit more healthy. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the texture is really I think it's really similar to the Thai culture that is really flexible. You can eat Thai rice with any kind of dish. And it has a texture, like it depends also the way you grind the rice. Like you, if you want the brown rice, you have one character, you have one texture. If you, ha if you want white rice, you have another kind of texture. And if you just like go explore other rice varieties in the country, they have their own uniqueness. Like if you want the Thai rice, but has a little bit of sticky, texture similar to Japanese one, you go for cow doi, like mm. the pakakayo rice, for example. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now I just want to eat rice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Make you hungry. I'm hungry now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what is your favorite Thai rice then? Like the your favorite variety? That's one of the most difficult question for me because to me it really depends on the dish that you eat rice with okay for example if i would go for curry rice i would choose like khao sang yot and if i want to have like sushi style i would choose like the bu what, family what, 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 bu, what is it again bu. bu ne mu for example is the name of the rice that belong to the pakakayo tribe so the word bu means rice ah. because it has some chewy chewiness and stickiness in its own mm -hmm. and you can go like more and more like we have paka ampun kind of the name of the rice variety which come from cambodian language and is actually grown in isan area Mm -hmm. So I cannot really choose one if I have to. Nice, no, nice. <laughs> so what is your signature? What is your, let's say, mm. most popular dish mm. in your restaurant in Meiposong? The most, I would say the signature is that we change the menu seasonally. Ah. Uh -huh. So we don't have the like, this is the all-time favorite or the most popular dish ever. But the signature is that people should people are aware that we change the menu seasonally according to the rice varieties and according to the vegetable that we have that we receive from our local producers, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Do you always come up with the um the menu, like the yes. names? Mm -hmm. and the ingredients and everything and my team also ah. we try new things a lot and we get all the feedback from customer for example like we ask what they would love to have for the next season oh. and for example this season the theme is the rice curry set because some of our regular customer wanted to have them 
Nice. So we just come up with the theme that people can just like check what kind of rice do you want, or maybe you want like a naan instead, and then you can choose the curry, like khao soy curry, green curry, Indian curry, or Japanese curry. Nice. And it comes with side dishes and salad and stuff. That's really mm-hmm. inclusive. I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, like you're trying to get your staff members involved mm-hmm. in the project as well. Oh yes, and you all get the your time. customers as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm. And how do you sort out your local ingredients? Mm-hmm. So as I mentioned, that Chiang Mai we have a lot of local farmers market. So I just I first go to those market and just try to connect, build a relationship with those producers, and I also go to. Rimping, if I can mention. Yeah. When I first started, even barefoot 10 years ago, I just go to Rimping and then just read from all the label what are the things that produce here in Chiang Mai, and, and then I can I just buy and try, and if it's good, I just call them from the number that is there on the label, and then try to connect with them directly, and then we measure, we see, like, the qualities, how they work together, is it worth like continue our relationship with them or not mm. and things like that and we also have the producers that 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 group is called Meta organic like that village they used to be in debt from uh, monocrop they plant only one thing and then the whole village turned to debt mm. some at some point and then the leader of the community had the idea of growing various things at the same time and do it organic 100% even before the organic kind of trend has started so they managed to get rid of all the debt and then they they are now the role model of the most sustainable community in the country nice. and this community we've been um, get that produces every week they make a system which is called CSA community supported agriculture so once you become a member, you get like a gong sum every week. So you cannot tell what's in the box. Mm. And they are the, they are the, the farmers are the person who pick the vegetable for you and they set their own price. So the, that things are not rely on the market price. Wow. Mm. That's great. Mm. I think this is such a, a great idea to support. Mm-hmm. Um, local people, local communities, right, right. And local products. Mm-hmm. Because one of the problem for that people don't want to be farmers anymore is mm-hmm. that they cannot control the price of the market. They might grow coriander, which today it says in the website that one kilo is 100 baht. And then the next day, the price might turn to be 5 baht per kilo. Yeah. And then it cannot cover that pesticide, I don't know, fertilizer and so on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally understand that mm. because actually my, my parents grow corn and uh. they grow a lot of things as well. Mm-hmm. And since I can remember, they they don't make a lot of money anymore, mm. actually. And like that's such money. a hard work, yeah. dedicated. Yeah. yeah, and they have to buy everything, mm-hmm. fertilizers mm-hmm. and stuff like that mm-hmm. from, you know, like big corporations, mm-hmm. big companies. Mm-hmm. And it's really difficult for them to, mm-hmm. to, to make money with that. Mm-hmm. So I think what you are doing is really good. It's like... Thank sustainable you. and mm. things like that so mm. do you have any advice mm. or what advice would you give to young people mm. who want to start a business like you or any business that is um sustainable like mm. sustainable agriculture or mm. you know like promoting local products or something um first of all in my opinion i think from now on you cannot build any business which you don't concern about sustainability anymore because it's already a part of uh, our future and our life, right? Mm. And what I would suggest is that you can try to figure it out what you, what kind of resources you already have surrounded you and what really make your heart beat faster. Like when you, when you look at something that you already have and this is, I don't, I don't know, maybe you call it like the, to listen to your gut or your intuition. And you can contemplate about it, like in the next couple of years or the next five years, will this thing still make your heart beat faster? And then you can just jump right into it. 
or you can also i mean you, you don't have to do just like i did like just jump into that without knowing any background it's also good that you have some background like management background and other stuff but just to make sure that the things that you are going to do it has meaning for your life and you like you can answer to yourself like what are the things that i like who are the people that i can help from doing this thing for example nice mm. like for, follow your heart follow your heart do something that you are super passionate about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's true that's nice yeah like sometimes right people get up in the morning mm. and then they might feel like oh i have to go to work again i have to do this again without feeling yeah. really excited about mm -hmm. what they are doing mm -hmm. that's a really good piece of advice yes and i mean you can just turn this kind of attitude to like oh i need to get up and do my work but then you can just it's just like a click of attitude that you can just suddenly change if you really have your passion on the things that you are doing right mm. then you can just like wake up and like yeah i just want to go I, i just cannot wait to work mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's nice mm. so what are your future plans mm -hmm. for post-op restaurant for post-op from what um i'm thinking now so apart from the restaurant part we also doing like a catering oh. mm -hmm, like more like a healthy catering outdoor we do the catering for like yoga school and people who concern about like well-being things like that and we also have cooking class So in the future, uh, what I can imagine now that we want to collab collaborate with other people, not only locally, but if it can be globally, it would be really nice. Like I can just bring those local rice varieties to the world and then we can just play with the ingredient from the local and seasonal ingredient from uh, other part of the world. Like mm. if I go to, I don't know, Peru, what what kind of dishes i can create from local thai rice varieties with the local ingredients that they have oh. and what kind of um again i i still think that food is the best tool to communicate and to connect people together so what what can we do to use food as a, as a medium to connect the people who have totally different background together mm -hmm. to can to have that kind of like the sense of togetherness and wholeness and unity through food wow. through a, a simple delicious meal right so i think we've learned so much about rice today and about mm -hmm. your passion you know about rice and about helping people supporting local places as well so thank you so much for coming to the show แล้วก็นักเรียนขาอย่าลืมนะคะว่าที่ขวานขึ้นไปข้างล่างนี้เป็นข้อมูลของร้านอาหารของพี่เอิญแล้วก็เป็นโปรเจกต์ของพี่เอิญด้วยนะคะใครที่มาเชียงใหม่อย่าลืมเด็ดขาดอย่าลืมแวะมาที่ร้านอาหารทั้ง2ที่ขึ้นเป็นทั้งสองที่ตรงนี้เลยนะคะก็ใครอยากลองพาสต้าพอพาสต้าสุดอีวันนึงเนี่ยก็มาลองทานข้าวด้วยก็ได้นะคะก็ใครที่ฟังคลิปนี้จบแล้วอย่าลืมฝากกดไลค์กดแชร์กดติดตามฝากกด subscribe ช่องของครูหวานด้วยแล้วครั้งหน้าแขกคนต่อไปจะเป็นใครก็ต้องคอยติดตามชมกันนะคะ See you guys next time Bye สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ